Um, I'm out on my bike, riding up and down the seafront because it's such a lovely day. I'm just going to go to Waitrose for my free coffee in a moment. <laughs> so I do very well in Brighton and I'd like to share that with everyone because you can live very well on very little. Just going for a walk, yeah. trying to get out of the house. St. Patrick's Day is cancelled, so <laughs> <laughs> we just said we'd go for a little walk. Today, I'm doing a lot of exercise to keep myself fit. I've been shopping, which was a waste of time. There's nothing to buy. And uh, we'll stop and have a cup of tea and then make our way home again. We're just having a little walk along the seafront because there's very little risk of contamination here and we want to have a chat. Today i just going to do some food shopping. I just stop a few things, more essential things, not go mad like other people. I'm going for a walk today with my mum and my sister and my niece who's off school. Not coronavirus. <laughs> get out the house and get some fresh air. <laughs> the sun's shining, shining on, on the, the sea. sea. That's gorgeous. And the lovely fresh air. Well, right now we're just out getting a bit of sun while we can. Um, after that, we're going back to our flat and we're just trying to self-isolate as a family, not because anybody's ill, uh, but just as much social isolation at this point is probably the best best idea. I hear that vitamin D and sunshine are good, so we're just uh, living in the now in the moment and just embracing this beautiful weather that we have just to kind of clear the cobwebs of fear and, uh, and everything that surrounds the pandemic. People that I thought were quite resilient really are going into quite a place of fear, so I'm spending quite a lot of my time at the moment just calm, pause. This is a time to heal. We're going to have to heal. You know, our infrastructure has gone. This country boggles my mind. Just about every other country in Europe is locked down and we're having things on a voluntary basis. As we walk along the seafront, people have no clue about social isolation. It's just, I'm going to run, run a meter from you and then Not cough in that. your face. Yeah. You know, we saw an old man walking down uh, Western Road, hacking, coughing, spitting spraying, spitting. <laughs> and uh, it's just shocking the behavior and the government is simply not taking a proactive approach. They are blaming the prime minister. What the prime minister will do, Mr. Johnson, uh, he have to go with the scientists. He have to go with it because he haven't got the knowledge with any science, you see. <laughs> he doesn't even... It doesn't impress me, let's put it that way. I find it quite alarming when I hear the Prime Minister saying that lots of loved ones will lose their lives. Um, there seems to be a gamble, uh, at least a couple of days ago when we were talking about herd immunity and uh, wanting to keep business open as usual and uh, take the risk of uh, losing the elderly population or those at risk. Um, it seems to be wealth is put ahead of health and uh, the consequences that that could have on the NHS are quite scary. We're from Ireland, so they're in like complete lockdown, everything's closed and you know they're not going outside their houses, whereas here it's kind of like, it's not as strict yet, but I think it should be. I think this generation right now like need to think about like making the right decision for everyone. We've been oh. through worse crises in our lives. We lived through World War. <laughs> <laughs> Who's bombed that 1940? <laughs> Got a knot in my stomach. Very worried, anxious about what's going to happen in the near future with my family and my business. We're rethinking things, really, in the light of what's going on. Because of a combo of Brexit and uh, coronavirus, we're currently not able to trade. I have to work from home, which means I have to speak to my team on video call every day. Knowing I'm a very social person, it's very, very strange for me to have, like, to basically work from my living room. I mean, I'm a musician and there's a lot of, there's a, there's a lot of my friends that are on tour at the moment and a lot of their tours have been cancelled. There's been concerts that's been cancelled. There's a lot of stuff coming up for us as a band um, abroad. We're meant to be in Russia in t two months that we're, we're kind of thinking, is that going to be possible? So I think music, I think everything's been affected 
been affected by it. Yeah, and people that work for me as well. I can't just lay people off like it doesn't mean a thing. It means everything. I don't want to get caught up in panic, so we're kind of doing what we always do, but if people say things are cancelled, then we go with the flow, see what they... Um, what they're advising. This morning I was in Oldies, queues were to the back of the shop and nobody said a word. It was like a graveyard in there. I don't believe in the whole panic, this panic buy-in and like panic. What is toilet roll gonna do really? Like I don't understand why everyone's buying so much toilet roll. It's only a fever that people should not get panic. All you have to isolate and, and people who is dying they are dying over 80, over 75. If you panic and worry, you're only going to make spread more anxiety and worry. If you think positive, as we all know, um, and I try and think more spiritually, if it's possible, then I think that it's a bit of a counterbalance. It's no good to get panic at the end of the day. We all in the same situation. The main thing I just tell people to stay calm. I haven't heard of any fatalities, so I suppose I can't really grasp how the situation really is. Suddenly, we'll all become scared of just suddenly probably mushroom. I do sort of uh, get to touch my face, should I? I got a lovely wife and two fantastic young kids. I came from nothing and they, I wanted to do better for them. The one worry for me is my husband has got asthma and I think, you know, if he caught it we'd be very worried and do our best to look after him and that kind of thing. So I think it's more about him making sure that he's not doing travelling if he doesn't need to. I've decided to pull my children out of school because my husband is high risk vulnerable with uh, uh, heart, liver and kidney conditions. So we're just trying to protect him with the uh, onset of COVID-19. I'm calling my parents every day, which was not the case before. Uh, I'm trying to call my mom because I know like she had like some, uh, she had pneumonia before, chest infection, and I know she's very at risk. So it's very, very important for me to hear from them because I know they are freaking out. And, you know, marriages are going to break down. There will be, you know, it's, it's quite a difficult thing to take that self-responsibility, heal yourself, heal the family around you, and then heal the world. It's, um, it's going to be quite painful for some. You know, we're going to have to come together and really support each other and get that sense of community, a sense of self-responsibility for ourselves, heal ourselves, and then we can be fit enough and well enough and go with the love to help other people. Uh, this morning we came downstairs and um, somebody in our apartment had, had left a note saying, you know, if you're, if you're sick or you need help with food or you need help going to get a prescription, you know, like call, call us, this PC, text us, not text us, and yeah. we'll go and get it for you. So I Which think is the, really nice. I think the yeah. element of community that people want to help um, yeah. is is there. You can see it. I had a text from my next door neighbour this morning saying, if we need anything, if we are not allowed to go out, we're to let them know. And they're a young couple with two lovely young children. People don't often offer, and I think maybe this will will force them to offer their help to others around them and to make sure that they're all right, that they're not panicking. I like to hope that there is a silver lining on this cloud. I can see, uh, especially this age group, teenagers who are really kind of coming together with great innovative ways of uh, supporting the elderly and those that are more vulnerable. And I think there needs to be more of a community effort and a, and a, a clear consciousness in, uh, in what we can do together and really pull together, even if we are isolated.
My business has been going 27 years. I've seen two crashes. The virus is the worst thing that's happened to us. We're hand to mouth at the moment. I don't know what to do. It was laissez-faire in Italy. It's blown up. Yeah. It was laissez-faire in Spain. It's blown up. France, blown up. It's going to happen here. Yeah. Why is it any different? We have the advantage of a bit more time and we are not taking advantage of it no. at all. I mean, last night after this speech, I woke outside and I could see like a lot of people were still like in pub, bar, restaurant, like living their life, like if nothing is happening. So I think they should just like shut down everything for good, like for at least two weeks. But they are, they are developing a vaccine. The vaccine takes a year to develop, you see. They can't just develop a vaccine and keep giving people, but they have to wait. We need to rethink the way that we um, are investing in local community and restructuring our food supplies, restructuring the way we live, because that's what I'm really hopeful about, actually. Yeah. What are we going to do to make our world a better place after this? It seems odd that one day everything seems fine, and then a couple of days later, uh, suddenly it doesn't. It's interesting whether people are choosing to be in the I or the we. And let's hope that we all go over into a we society now and really support each other. I like to think that um, if we've had a bumpy ride, and uh, many of us will have lost people, especially uh, older relations, I can think it can only really do us good in a way, not that I'd ever bring it on, but since it's here, I think that you're always um, a better person for having been through any difficulties. Died with the Asian flu in the Spanish flu in 1918, didn't they? Didn't they? I mean, it just something happens, is not it? It, it? it dies it. out naturally in the end. Just a, few, just a few go a bit earlier than they <laughs> 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 If there is a plan, it shouldn't be ambiguous. You know, you don't need lots of information. You need bullet points, what to do and when to do it. Uh, I just think it's a fug at the moment. Got no idea what's happening. Fingers crossed we'll be all right. <laughs> don't know whether to be scared yet. <laughs> but then maybe we should be scared. Maybe we've got the whole different attitude. I don't know. There is absolutely no sense in saying we're going to ban public gatherings, but yet send your kids to a school of 2,000 children every day where they're telling us, yeah, everybody's still hugging, everybody's still kissing, everybody's still shaking hands. Madness. Just utter madness. Because the dogs still want to go out for a walk, they still go to the supermarket, they still do regular, regular things. And we intend to keep going out until we've, we're made to stay in. It is very tough, it's very scary. Um, I think my opinion, same as everyone else, government's a waste of time. They should have done stuff earlier. Yeah, the pollution's gone in China, the rivers are clean in Venice. No change happens without a, a, a lot of tension. Fear's not the place to be. We can do this. It's important to get out of the house and take your five minutes away from what's going on in the world. Don't get anything, get into you and get panic. It's no good to get panic at the end of the day. Thankfully, we've got lots of friends and family that if anything happened, I know that they would look after us. So I think it's different for those that don't have friends and family local and who haven't got other people to rely on. I feel that we're way behind where we should be, strategically speaking. What do you say? I'm asking you, sir, what do you say? <laughs> I'm panicking. I no need to panic, man. What for? Let them give them scientists a chance for six months and then see what happens. I'm confident that I won't get it. I eat lemons every day. I use lemons as an antibacterial and as an antiviral. And um, I sleep well, I exercise. And if I get it, so be it. I'm a bit of a fatalist and I'll accept that. For what I see in France, on, I think it was on Thursday or Friday, they say, people, please, like, restaurants will be closed, blah, blah, blah. And on Sunday, everybody was having picnic outside, like, if nothing is happening. It, it beggars belief, really. And in such a short time. 
and I don't think people thought it was going to impact there were all these countries and, and now none of us know where it's going to end up. Oh, just bloody enjoy, enjoy the life. day and just carry on. We've all got to die one day. <laughs> That's for sure. We're not going to escape it. We're not going to escape death, are we? <laughs> I hope we haven't bored you too much. <laughs> <laughs>